thinking about going to Somalia. I know you guys call me crazy if you want. I'll try to get the camera in a little bit closer. The light definitely doesn't help me. But um, yeah, man, I've been thinking. I've been thinking about going to Somalia. Even though, even though I might get killed there, I might get killed by Al Shabaab. I might get killed by clan militias. I might get blown up by a bomb and my body just flies and sprays everywhere. I might die if I go to Somalia, but I'm willing to take that risk because... Because... I don't know why I'm willing to take that risk. That's a good question. That's a good question. Because I like to take risks, you know. I'm a gambler. I'm a little bit of a gambler, you know. So I'm going to take all that money I saved up. I've already, I've already bought the ticket. The ticket was like a thousand euros. Thousand euros off the rip. How long am I gonna stay there? Where am I gonna go? Who am I gonna talk to? What am I gonna be doing over there? No, it's kind of classified information. <laughs> it's classified information, guys. I can't tell you everything, you know. But obviously, I'm gonna go to where my clan is from, which is Bukhdijan. People are gonna look at me funny because of my tattoo. I don't think they're going to necessarily care too much about it because it's like, dude, like, there's so many big things that these guys have to worry about, like civil war, terrorism, corruption, and they're not going to be thinking about some, some uh, Somali diaspora with a tattoo. Like, that's not something that they care about to a certain extent, you know? Obviously, I'm going to get some weird looks and shit like that. Or I can cover it up and wear a long sleeve shirt. I mean, it is what it, it is. What it is. I'm willing to do all those things. But then when I go to Somalia, it's like I'm gonna have my GoPro, make some videos and shit like that, and I might get killed. By out of nowhere, I might just get shot in the head by some random person, and then the clan, the clan of the particular person that murdered me, would go free because they have clan connections. You know, it's happened before. I saw it on Reddit, like some dudes friend went to Somalia he got killed by some other dude and then the clan protected him so he didn't go to jail he got off scot-free essentially <laughs> it's an interesting dichotomy to kind of to kind of think about so I'm so there's a chance that I might just get blown apart by a bullet or something someone might just kill me out of nowhere and then the person that killed me, potentially, he can just go free. Because it's a free-for-all in our country. Rule of law isn't exactly the biggest priority right now for Somalia. There's terrorists that control 20 to 30% of the country. Almost 30% of the country. The government only controls Mukdisho. And they don't control the whole thing. They don't control the whole city. Al-Shabaab controls some areas of Mukdisho. When I visited Somalia, it was 2014. So 2014, the Al-Shabaab had a lot more power. It was like 10 years ago, right? Almost 10 years ago. And the country hasn't really evolved that much. I mean, I guess if I'm going there, I'm going to see for myself, right? But, you know, I don't have any particular... I don't have any... Um, how do you say preconceived notions of how that country is going to become in the future because I don't think Somalia will ever improve. I'm being a pessimistic, like this is a pessimistic mindset right now, but the reality is that it's never going to happen. It's just never going to happen. You can think about it, you can say, hey, Somali Wayne, hey, Somalia is united. We're not united. Somaliland is a semi-autonomous region in the north. And they want to be separate from us. They don't want to be part of our country. Puttland is a semi-autonomous region, even though it has... It's not independent, it's semi-independent. Like, it does have ties to the federal government, but the federal government doesn't control it because they're not strong enough to control Puttland. They have their own clan militia, they have their own clan politics. They don't answer to Mukhlisha. So, they don't pay taxes either. The only, country, the only city that pays taxes to the federal government in Somalia is Mogadishu. 
but the citizens also pay taxes to the Al Shabab. I'm gonna break down Al Shabab for you guys a little bit. When you go through Al Shabab checkpoints in Somalia, you pay a tax. It's based on how much cargo you carry, and the drivers already know how much they're gonna pay. And they sometimes get a receipt or something. So when they pay the tax for going through those checkpoints, the Al Shabab, the Al Shabab checkpoints, you pay a tax, and then they let you through, and then you get a receipt, so you don't get paid, you don't get taxed twice. But with the gov, this is the reason why. Al Shabaab is kind of like supported more because the government doesn't do the terrorists the terrorists do more for the country than the government does. So essentially, what you have is this anarchist um, an anarcho state where the government has no power or little to no power. So that means that they don't control anything. What ha what needs to happen in Somalia is somebody needs to win. Like somebody needs to get there on top, you know? Like someone has to be super powerful and control the whole country. That's the only way we're going to have a, a Somalia that's united is with a dictator with an iron fist. Because democracy, as much as I would like it, I would love it, you know? Because I think self-determination, that's definitely import important. But Somalia... I don't necessarily think it has any hope. Um, yeah, it's a country where, you know, most of the economy is built on remittance, remittance from abroad, abroad. So people like me, I don't send any money over there because I don't care. But like my dad, he sends money to his family back in Somalia. Um... What what is my clan by the way? Air Absiya Muhammad Umar Some something 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 like that Air or Absi Muhammad Umar and then Habr Gibir maybe I'm not sure I'm not sure But I'm pretty sure my clan is Air and then Absiya and then you know So yeah, man, clan, clan is definitely a big part of Somalia, you know. Clan, 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 clan. Well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push back against that narrative a little bit. Even though clan is a big thing in Somalia, isn't clan a big thing in the Netherlands too? Like, I understand it's kind of like okay, they say everyone's treated equally here, everyone's treated fair, but in reality, that's not the case, right? <laughs> a white person. Will be treated better than a black person in terms of different things in some in Netherlands. Police, police, they'll treat you differently if you're black compared to if you're white. Um, in dating, like if you're trying to date a girl or something, you're gonna be treated a lot worse than you. You know, in every single parameter of society, there's racism everywhere. No matter where you go, there's racism. As long as you're the minority in that country, there's always going to be racism against you. And there's always going to be injustice forever and ever. It's always been like that way. And it will always be like that in the future. <laughs> so, so, so what, why am I saying that? I'm saying that essentially, unless we as Somalis make Somalia better, we're always going to face injustice abroad. Doesn't matter if you speak the language, doesn't matter if you speak Dutch fluently, doesn't matter if you're a naturalized citizen, doesn't matter if, um, it doesn't matter, it honestly doesn't matter, none of it matters. You'll never be considered Dutch, never, ever, ever. You'll never be accepted into their social circles, they'll never see you as Dutch, even though you are, in the strictest sense of the word. Um, society will never look at you as a Dutch person when you apply for jobs you'll get discriminated against because you don't have a Dutch sounding name even though you speak Dutch you're from the, ne you're from the Netherlands and when you give people these problems they tell you oh just leave the country go somewhere else if you don't like it you know even though you're born in the country and you speak Dutch and you you know it's like it's interesting 
It's interesting. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Yes. Okay, moving on. Why am I saying all this? I'm saying, yeah, unless we, as Somali people, we make Somalia better, we're always going to be treated like this abroad forever and ever and ever. Which is why there are communities for that reason. That's why, that's why certain groups clique up and bunch up together. You know, because they see that the outside communities are not treating them, you know, so... You know, Somalia is never going to change. I mean, yeah, I'm pessimistic. I'm very pessimistic. Very pessimistic. 